Hey everybody, welcome back to the ECG of the day. My name is Reed, and don't forget that you can download the PDF of today's ECG down in the description below. Um, and feel free to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content. So let's jump into this one. This is a funky looking rhythm. It looks crazy, but it's actually not so bad. So let's take a look at it. First thing we're gonna notice is that we've got a wide complex rhythm, right? If I'm looking at the force, I've got a wide complex rhythm that seems to stay the same the entirety of the rhythm. Right, so we've got a wide complex rhythm. And if you notice that before each wide complex QRS, right, you've got this big, tall spike, right? And if you look up here in lead one, you can see it a little bit more appropriately, that spike. And so when you see a spike in front of a wide complex QRS, you are thinking that there is a pacing spike and in this case, it leads to a QRS. So this is a ventricular pacing spike, right? So this person has a pacemaker that has a wire that goes down and is in their ventricle, right? And it's pacing. <clears throat> and what is the rate that it's pacing at? Well, if I find one that lands on a solid line here, and I know it's pacing at 300, 150, 100, so just over 100, in between 100 and 150 beats per minute, we'll maybe call this 110 beats per minute. So it's pacing pretty quickly, okay? And so I look and I see, well, I wonder if it's pacing that fast because I know that some pacemakers also have another wire that goes into the right atria and it can sense, right? So sometimes you can have a, a rhythm that you have a P wave that depolarizes the atria and it's sensed by that pacemaker. And so that pacemaker will then wait and transmit a pacing spike in the ventricles after that atrial P wave and couple them together. So I look in front for any P waves and I don't see any. I don't see any P waves in front of my QRSs. So this doesn't seem like it's a sinus tachycardia at 110 beats per minute or an atrial tachycardia. But when I look through for P waves, I see that there are a few P waves. There's a P wave, right? You see that little bump? Right, so that's a sharp P wave on that ST segment. You've got another one there. You've got another one there. You've got another one there, right in front of it, right? So you've got some P waves that are sometimes kind of randomly, sporadically appearing throughout this rhythm. And so maybe there's another one kind of right there on top of that T wave. And so what do we think is um, this all means? Well, it's hard to say, but what I can say is that I can definitely say that uh, this ventricular pacemaker is there is no AV tracking. And what that means is that my you know, pacemaker is not coupling atrial P waves to ventricular QRSs, right? We're just having a ventricular pacemaker that is just beating throughout this entire rhythm at a rate of 110 beats per minute. And we intermittently will see these P waves come through, right? So that's what we have. And that can occur for various reasons, right? Maybe this person just has a single chamber pacemaker in their ventricles. And this is just a pacing mode that will increase when it increases um, some sensed activity, right? And so remember, you know, why do we have this wide complex QRS that is occurring after the pacing spike, right? So we get a pacing spike and then a wide complex QRS. Well, remember that the pacemaker, when it fires off that signal, it is going to spread from cell to cell throughout the ventricular myocardium from gap junction to gap junction. Right, and so that takes a long time. You can also notice that in ventricular pacemakers, if you look at the inferior leads, leads two, three, and AVF, the morphology of that QRS is very negative, right? So that tells me that the QRS is going away from leads two, three, and AVF, right? And so if my inferior leads, leads two, three, and AVF, have a QRS complex that's going away from them, right, that kind of helps me understand that, yeah, my ventricular pacing lead is right here in the inferior portion of the myocardium, right? And it's spreading depolarization away from me, creating negative complex QRSs after that pacing spike, negative QRS, 
and my inferior leads, right? That makes sense. So things are starting to line up a little bit. And so we've got a pacemaker here that's not tracking the atria in particular, uh, but we've got a, a very rapid rate here. So why is it not tracking the atria? Like we said, it's really hard to say. Um, it could be because maybe my um, patient only has a ventricular pacemaker, right? And so that would be in a VVI mode. If it just had a single chamber pacemaker in the ventricles, that tells me that it will sense in the ventricles, it will pace the ventricles, and it is inhibited by signal, right? So what does that mean? Inhibited by signal means that if an intrinsic beat from this P wave, if an intrinsic beat spreads through the ventricles, it will be sensed by the ventricular pacemaker and that pacemaker will be inhibited, meaning it's not going to need to fire off if it senses that beat. So sometimes people that have a single chamber ventricular pacemaker will have a ventricular lead that is in this VVI mode, meaning that it will pace in the ventricle, right? If it paces, it will pace the ventricle. It senses the ventricle, meaning that, like I said, if it senses QRS complex from the intrinsic myocardium itself, it can sense it. And if it senses it, it will become inhibited. However, we notice that we're not seeing any sensed QRS complexes here because all of these QRS complexes are occurring from the pacemaker. So right now, this pacemaker is not being inhibited because it's not sensing any intrinsic QRS complexes and we would see those um, in the rhythm itself. So that's what we have going on, right? This is one of those ECGs that it's good to just go over, but one, it's one that um, is really important in a clinical context. And so, um, you know, this patient, depending on their symptoms, depending on the function of their pacemaker, depending on what type of pacemaker they have, um, would be really important. If you wanted to, you know, maybe evaluate this person for ischemic changes, right? You can look for pathological Q waves and ST and T wave changes. You can't look for pathological Q waves, but you can look for ST and T wave changes with a criteria called Scarbosa criteria. And this is a criteria that adapts um, the ST and T wave changes that are, you know, usually when you have a normal QRS complex, you have normal T waves and ST segments. But when you have paste beats, um, you have um, some ST and T wave strain, so you have to accommodate for that. So luckily we don't see any of those issues here, but uh, we do see um, P waves, QRS complexes that don't really kind of talk to each other. So, alrighty, I hope this helps. It's got to have a funky rhythm, I know, but it's good to just get practice to see what is going on um, within um, this person's um, kind of electric axis in their heart. So, alrighty. If you have any questions, throw them down in the comments. And if not, thanks so much for watching and have a great rest of your day. Take care.